Um, and it's like a showdown. Um, this piece here. So, the Britain City Council, when it took possession of the showdown piece, it was a, like a dull, dusky pink. Um, and when it was restored, they found some of the original colours, uh, which then alerted them to the fact. So they went off and did a digital comparison to the original photos of the day one when it was unveiled. Um, and yeah, I mean, it takes its toll and, uh, and discolours these things, but it's now back, that particular piece is back to its vibrant uh, colour, and it's the same with the rock. Yeah, I was inferring that that vandalised it. Right. So, this is a photo of um, some art buster pieces, uh, which we thought to be from Expedia Aquila, uh, that Stefan saved. These, all these pieces were originally from um, the Logan Hyperdome. Um, and after about 12 years being on display, they were taken down, uh, and John Long, of course, at Longhurst, had said to Stefan, I'm about to toss them out. Stefan said, no, don't do that. Give them to the South Bank Corporation, they'll get them up on display. Well, he only ever got two up on display. They were sitting in Collins House for ages. Went from Collins House when that property was sold uh, back in 2015, 16, uh, and went into a rail carriage over at uh, Roman Street, and that's where the Brisbane City Council found them, and started to recast them, thinking they were from Expo 88, and then um, the error was discovered. And so we've changed the narrative to be in the spirit of Expo 88 because they are the same models who sat for these as to what sat for the Expo 88 uh, pieces. And in some cases, they are in very similar poses. Um, so one person's got an arm up, the next one's got an arm down. Um, and, you know, thank you, Stefan, for saving those. Uh, and they are um, just, uh, you know, priceless bit of memory of Expo 88. Uh, the, these pieces here uh, have just been saved uh, from the Landcare building, which was about to be demolished. Um, got on the ABC, made a bit of a fuss. By the time it got off the radio, the Premier's Department had been on it, which was the council. Here, please take these off our hands. We've got them saved. But they were listed down under the contract of demolition as hazardous material, remove all site carefully. Uh, and also in that particular building, was this huge poster, plus uh, a lot of other material um, that is now all gone up to the Caboolture Historical Village uh, for keeping in um, perpetuity. Um, it's a bit faded now, but uh, it's a good starting point. Um, there's original ne negatives floating around on the internet of this site, so it'll be reproduced. Um, and it's just like your grandfather's old axe, it'll be uh, the same photo. Uh, from the museum that was on site. Um, the art trail, um, so it's grown and developed uh, over time and we're still in the process of saving things. As I said, this is now in the hands of the Brisbane City Council. We'll be going back out on display. There's the sad clown from IBM. There is the American photographer from um, Queensland newspapers uh, and there's a, a piece at the end that I'll show you that is in the process of being recast as we speak. Now this is another piece um, that will be going um, hopefully from Stadiums Queensland to the Brisbane City Council and then be restored and go back up on the space called the Skater. It stands about seven metres high in the air um, and it's just taken me ages and ages and by the time I finally got permission out of some of the stadiums Queensland to save the darn thing. It was in a different budget year, so then I fell foul of the fact that Grain Run's a very tight budget program and there wasn't any budget allocation. So now we're hunting for a new budget allocation to uh, save it <coughs> because it stands seven metres high there. It's a huge steel sea with a, a skater on the top. It had two other uh, pieces as part of it, but they fell off many, many years ago and have disappeared. But it's still an iconic piece regardless. Uh, and it certainly deserves to be, uh, to be saved. Now, you heard me make mention of the Caboolture Historical uh, Village, and there is the bottom of an A um, back in 2012, uh, and that has now been 
removed off site by them. Uh, and Ron has a newsletter, and in the newsletter, there's complete details of the restoration of the Australian letters. And all I can say is on the 28th of, of uh, October this year, please go up to the Caboolture Historical Village and be a part of the unveiling of these signs, because they are just working their backside off up there to, uh, to re-establish the signs of tourist attraction. Um, and it's just quite amazing. Now, just excuse me for a second. Does that look familiar? <laughs> yes, that is that bottom. How's that? So, you want to have a closer look? It is quite heavy, but these letters were six, seven metres in the air, uh, and so even though it is, you know, think quite heavy, you think heavy enough, it is, they were only made to last for six months, uh, and it's been amazing that they've lasted in large part as much as they, they have, but it would be. So it's amazing that the uh, pieces have lasted as much as what they have for as long as they have, um, and the cost of anyone else restoring those would be absolutely astronomical. They are just spending thousands of man hours, have a, uh, a cast of thousands of volunteers. Uh, working on it, there's just teams constantly sanding it, grinding it, defoliating it, um, prepping it, and it, a lot of that information can be found in the, in the newsletter that will come around. Um, yeah, so just, and it, it was funny, man. it was a young boy, just a little bit older than Nathan, who decided we'll put an ad up on the internet uh, that sparked the whole thing off. Um, the ABC, Rebecca and Craig program, uh, they took it up uh, and the media just went nuts. It was just incredible. I mean, I'd spent many, many hours trying to save them back in 2012-13 and made absolutely no progress. I mean, I had been down to the Australian Museum. No, I couldn't have it down here. Visual pollution, can't have on the foreshore, which was the only place they could have. Went out to Longwich, no. Uh, we can't have them out here. It's not part of our charter. We, it was a Queen open. Um, the Hall of Fame uh, out there the day before Expo opened. Um, went to the Airport Corporation. Uh, almost had them accepted, then the management changed. New manager, new beliefs, uh, we'll look at it. Forgot about it. Uh, and then a young fellow puts an ad up. Someone buys them, pay five grand for them, and then arrange them to be delivered to the Caboolture Historical Village, and the rest, they say, is history. And the Caboolture Historical Village, they are really doing an amazing work um, the, the, the Lord Mayor's got me doing a bit of a regional support thing for the Expo 88 Arts Trial. So the leftover bodies have gone into Kingaroy, Black Park, <coughs> which again, the yearly bike ride going in memory of Expo 88, from the Brisbane Valley Rail Trial to the Mary Valley Rail Trial, mm -hmm. from Black Park to the Brisbane Valley Rail Trial to Kingaroy and the Mary Valley Rail Trial, uh, along an old disused cattle run. Um, and it's VNB, VNB dancers and butterfly catchers, dancers and butterfly catchers. And the leftover, so that it couldn't recast it, the arms and legs were taken off these pieces and they went into the Caboolture Historical Village. And here they are, they've taken the arms and legs, which I thought were relatively valueless, and they've actually redone and reimagined them into Expo scenarios. This is a, a scenario of a very famous toilet scene from Expo 88, The Talking Dunny. <laughs> um, doesn't yet talk, but no doubt they're going to get it to talk. Uh, and so they're just doing a really quite amazing work out there. Now, earlier in the piece, I made a comment about um, the Dinky Dye little recording oh, yes. camera. Uh, and we, John and I, um, had gone off to record this fellow here on the left. Uh, uh, um, and it's The Rock, uh, and his name is Stephen Killick. Uh, and S Stephen ha had designed this piece here, and there's a funny story to this. It's called The Rock. It was sent a piece out the front of the Australian Pavilion as the entry into it. It was meant to be red concrete. So Stephen had spent six months building the mould for the concrete to be poured into to get the outline, and then 
it's going to be paying it up. Uh, and the cement trucks arrive on the day, paying, putting it in about half full, and he says, when are you going to add the red colour? And the concrete fellow said, what red colour? This is grey concrete. He said, no, I ordered red concrete. Oh, sorry, mate, but they dispatched grey. Well, how are we going to change the colour? We can't, it's grey. No, no, I want a red name, it's grey. Filled it up, set, end of it. And he hated that piece. So after we did the interview, he's telling us this story, and then he says to us, he says, it was funny, you know, that it's still, it's still here, this piece. He said, the Expo Authority asked me, what do I want done with the piece at the end of Expo? Because all these artists had the right of the super profit over the sale price. And so a lot of them took a great interest in what it was being sold for. Uh, and Stephen Killick's response was, you can bulldoze it into the effing river for all I care. <laughs> and with that he walked away. And he had never seen that piece until we interviewed him some 25 years uh, later. Uh, and we interviewed him with the dinky dive or camera and it was windy and the speech patterns were sort of drifted in and out, mostly in but a little bit out. You got out of way, YouTube went up. Um, and he, uh, you know, he just gave us curry at the end of it. It's really quite funny. Um, so, on to another character in this Expo 88 saga. Uh, David Hinchcliffe, uh, former Brisbane City Council alderman, uh, council, probably an alderman as well. Yes, we would be probably direct. Uh, sitting here with uh, John Butler Hudson. Now, David had a passion in relation to art. He's now a uh, lives the life of royalty, travels the world doing art classes in Venice, uh, in New York, in London. Um, just an amazing life. But David is just, he is a wonderful person. And he, he, I admire him, and he is the best Lord Mayor that Brisbane never had. And he just had so much potential and it was just really quite a shame uh, from his prospects that they uh, that he was shafted and they've got to go to a way to run. Now, David was instrumentally involved in preserving Paragon, instrumentally involved in getting, there's a, there's a piece out at um, the Botanical Gardens called The Chair, on display, having the rock. And the other thing I wanted to say about the rock, and I knew there was a, uh, a picture I wanted to put in here that I should have. Um, for 25 years, that has stood in the, um, uh, underneath the Story Bridge in Burke Park, and it's, yeah, and it's never had a name. No one would never ever know what it was or where it came from. And I just, and how John McGregor knew where it came from was more about the fact that he went to the park, looked at it, and thought, I know that. And then he went off and did the research uh, in, um, in the Philip Bacon Gallery sculpture book to find out, well, yes, this is one of the same pieces. It didn't actually look exactly the same because the council has recolored and slightly reinterpreted the pictures so they're a lot more vibrant now than what it was. And it's also had anti graffiti paint on it which has given it a great deal of depth whereas before it was just straight concrete. Um, 